After making hundreds of different things in the air fryer, there are a few things that my entire family loves and we've made several times over and over. Today, my family's helping me and we're telling you what our favorite things to make in the air fryer are. Son, tell me, what's your favorite thing to make in the air fryer? My favorite thing to make in the air fryer is chicken nuggets. Yes. How about what's your favorite thing that I make for you in the air fryer? I love it when you make those barbecue rice bowls, like with the chicken. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, mm -hmm. it's yeah, nice. let's see it's pretty it. pretty awesome. Let's see it. Jump in as many as you want and check it out right on the back. They have instructions, but I personally prefer 380 for 10 minutes. Oh, nice. Buy yourself some Chick-fil-A sauce or make your own. I have a recipe linked down below and you have saved yourself a ton of money. First, you're gonna to wanna to chop and wash some romaine lettuce. This is how I like to do it in my salad spinner. Then chop your tomatoes, set all of that aside, and it's time to prep your chicken. Pat it dry with paper towels, and then go ahead and just chunk up your chicken. Then throw some barbecue seasoning all over these chicken pieces. Mix it all up, and then here's the cheat code. Look at the cheat sheet. We're gonna go 380 for 10 minutes, and boom, there we go. Then give it a stir, and if needed, give it just a couple more minutes and then just let it rest and it's gonna come to temp. While that's resting, I like to make my homemade barbecue sauce. This is in the back of my cookbook, by the way, but I'm gonna give it to you right here. In a small pot, just add in one and a quarter cups of ketchup, a cup of brown sugar, a quarter cup of molasses, a quarter cup of pineapple juice, quarter cup of water, a tablespoon of liquid smoke, two and a half teaspoons of ground mustard, two teaspoons of paprika, half teaspoon of garlic powder, a pinch of cayenne pepper, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, and just stir to combine and let it simmer on the stove top for about 15 minutes. Now I'm gonna take my chicken out and just chop it up into little pieces. And then I always like to have some rinsed corn kernels, some rinsed black beans, cilantro lime rice, chopped cilantro, all the delicious toppings. Now we need to assemble all of this goodness. It's one of our favorites, huh? Enjoy. Olivia, tell me, what's your favorite thing to eat that's made in the air fryer? I like the glazed donuts and the Brussels sprouts. Like, are you talking about the Parmesan crusted Brussels sprouts? Yeah, I like those Ooh. ones. All right, let's see what they are. You need to start with one cup of milk that has been warmed to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Go ahead and pour that in a mixing bowl and then add in two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast or instant yeast and then just a teaspoon of sugar and you're gonna let that yeast just kind of simmer for about five to 10 minutes till it's foamy. While you're waiting on that, get six tablespoons of unsalted butter. Go ahead and melt it and in a separate bowl, beat up one egg. Now go back to your yeast mixture and add in a quarter cup of sugar, a half teaspoon of salt, and then pour in that beaten egg and mix it up. Now I'm pulling out my mixing stand. This will give you best results, but you could do this by hand if you do not have a big mixer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in the four tablespoons of melted butter, and then throw in two cups of flour and start mixing on low speed. Scrape the edges of the bowl, and then throw in one more cup of flour. After mixing for a while, you're gonna to wanna to see that the dough is pulling away from the sides of the bowl, but you still want it to be a little sticky. If it's too sticky to work with, you can add up to a quarter more cups of flour. Knead it just a little bit and then go ahead and set it in a sprayed bowl. Cover it with plastic wrap or a towel and then you're just gonna let it rest for about 30 minutes. After it's done resting, it's time to roll out the dough and cut out some donut shapes. I just use a three inch cookie cutter, but you could use a glass and then something smaller to make your donut holes. You can continue to reuse the dough and just make all of your donuts. Now, I usually like to lay them out on my silicone mat and then just cover so they can rise ever so slightly. While those are rising, let's go ahead and make the glaze. You'll need six tablespoons of melted butter and then add in two cups of powdered sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla, mix that all up, and then we're gonna add in anywhere from two to four tablespoons of hot water. That 
that is just however much you want, however thin you want your glaze to be. You just want to stir it so it has a nice, smooth consistency. And now that our donuts are looking fantastic, it's time to start air frying. They should feel nice and soft and fluffy. Spray the bottom of your basket and then place some donuts inside and lightly spray the top. And then we're gonna air fry these at 350 degrees for about four minutes. And look at how beautiful and golden these are. I just set my donuts on a wire rack to start the cooling process. But before they get too cool, you wanna dunk them in the glaze. Just hold your donut, drop it right in, and ooh la la, there we go. Delicious air fried donuts. Throw in some sprinkles if you want, and everyone is going to enjoy these. And don't forget your donut holes. They'll cook about the same amount of time, and I found it's just easy to throw them in the glaze and stir it up. Someone just got home, finally. And what does she want? Donut. A donut. Mmm, that's good. One of your favorites? Yes. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Mm hmm That's good. You'll need a pound of Brussels sprouts. Go ahead and just wash them and then cut them in half. I do like to remove the stems as well. Then pour them in a bowl and add in about a tablespoon of avocado oil. Give that a stir so everything is coated. And then add in one teaspoon of minced garlic, half teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, one third cup of grated Parmesan cheese, one third cup of panko breadcrumbs, and then stir all of that up so everything is coated nicely. Then grab yourself an oven safe dish. I'm just using an eight inch cake pan and you're gonna place those cut side down right inside the pan. There will be extra breadcrumbs in the Parmesan mixture. So go ahead and sprinkle all the remaining right on top of the sprouts. Give it one last spray and then pop in the air fryer at 300 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. Flip your Brussels sprouts, give it a little spray, sprinkle on any more crumbs and then air fry at 380 for five more minutes. And check this out. And now you can see why Olivia loves this one so much. Mmm, that's very good. You're a fan? No, yeah, adds more taste to it than the just regular Brussels sprouts. Ooh, yeah. Four out of five. So Mel, what's your favorite thing to make in the air fryer or eat from the air fryer? It's definitely gotta be lava cakes, crunchy wraps, and loaded taco nachos. To start, you're gonna wanna use this baking chocolate. Now I've tried it out with chocolate chips and it works fine, but I tell you what, the baking bars or chips, whatever they are, it just gives it a little more richer, deeper taste. And so I do recommend these. You'll find these on the baking aisle right next to the chocolate chips. The recipe calls for 60% cacao. I can only find the 56%, so we're gonna go with that today. We're just gonna break up the chocolate. And then we're gonna use the microwave to melt this. And then you're gonna wanna run it for a minute and a half at 50% power. But you need to watch that time because you wanna stir it every 30 seconds. And guess what I forgot? Butter, yep, you need 10 tablespoons of butter. Luckily I have a whole stick here that's nice and soft. That's eight tablespoons. And then my kids always seem to have leftover butter that they throw in a ramekin. So it's nice and soft. I'm gonna just cut this up a little bit. Learn from my mistake here. Don't forget the butter. We'll just continue on with the melting phase. And guess what? Just like air fryers, microwaves are a little bit different too. So you might need more or less time to get this nice and melted. Just make sure you stir it every 30 seconds. We are really, really close. By the way, do you like my little plexiglass whiteboard here? Got cute little notes from my older daughters. And you know what? Look, that soft butter only took about 30 more seconds to melt with the chocolate. So we are good to go. Now add in a half teaspoon of salt a whopping one and a half cups of powdered sugar and a half cup of all-purpose flour and stir this up and combine it. And you'll see it is gonna get really, really thick and that is exactly what it's supposed to do. It's like a thick brownie batter. But don't worry, because we have three eggs we're gonna add to it, plus three more egg yolks right into the bowl. It's gonna be a little challenging at first to start mixing these together. Now here's what I kind of muscled through with the spatula, but it's still lumpy. So you will wanna get the whisk and just work at it. It'll take maybe just a minute of stirring here. Before you know it, you will have some nice, smooth batter. Go ahead and grease your ramekins, and you're just gonna fill them about three quarters of the way full. 
tool. And by the way, I link to all the tools that I use at airfryertools.com, including these ramekins. Now you'll get anywhere from four to eight servings out of this. It just depends on what size of ramekin you use. These are my eight ounce ramekins, and then I've got two of the six ounce ramekins for this batch of batter. Now normally when I do any sort of cake or thick battery type things, I wanna cook those low and slow, just because I don't want the tops to burn before the center is cooked, but these are lava cakes, and they are meant to be gooey in the inside. So we wanna cook these uncovered at 400 for eight minutes, That'll give you a nice gooey center, or you can go up to 10 minutes if you want it just a little more baked inside. And eight minutes later, a little burnt on top, which is exactly how it's supposed to be. Now these are the bestest ever when they're nice and warm. It's easiest to get these out by inverting them. You might have to tap. Oh, look at that. Top it with some ice cream. Yep, just never fails. Five, without a doubt. Gather up your favorite taco toppings. I got some cooked seasoned meat, some pico, cheese, large burrito sized tortillas, and some sour cream. First, lay out your tortilla and just cut it halfway into the center. And then you're gonna paint some sour cream right on that quarter part of the tortilla. Then get some hamburger meat or chicken or whatever it is you want. Load that in the second spot then add some cheese, and then some pico de gallo. And now the fun part, you gotta fold it up. Fold the sour cream on the ground beef, and then over to the cheese, and then lastly the pico, and it is ready to go. I like to spray my air fryer basket to help that be nice and crispy. And then I'm gonna spray the top of that tortilla one more time. And then all you do is air fry at 380 degrees, run it for about two to three minutes, and then flip it and do the same thing on the other side. Kachow, this is nice and crispy. It's one of our favorites. To make it super simple, we're gonna use parchment paper, then throw down a layer of chips, then throw on your already cooked meat, and if you haven't seasoned it, sprinkle on some taco seasoning, and then you can throw on refried beans, or black beans, or whatever you want. Just make sure you add lots of cheese. And then we're gonna do it one more time. Chips. Your meat. This would also be good with shredded chicken or pork, anything you want. Your beans. And yep, more cheese. And I'm gonna throw on some more taco seasoning. Then pop it right in your air fryer and we're gonna bring it down to 330 degrees and then run it for about three to four minutes. And now, oh yeah, look at that. Now you just grab that parchment paper, slide it right out, and the air fryer is still clean. The mess is right here, ready for you to eat. We're throwing on some salsa, some sour cream, green onions, fresh tomatoes, even some cilantro. And these are perfectly loaded, super fast and easy nachos. Tall boy, <laughs> what's your favorite air fryer food? Um, homemade pizza bagels. All right, so grab two bagels out of the bag. Go ahead and cut them open. Good job, good job. And by the way, this is on page 174 in my cookbook at yummyairfryrecipes.com. Now this is a little bit larger basket, so I think we can fit one more in there. Okay, then you're just gonna spread that pizza sauce all over those bagels and go ahead and place pepperoni down or whatever type of protein you want. Then throw down all the cheese. Now it kind of helps if you kind of push it down a little bit, especially with this thinner sliced cheese. Pop it in the air fryer. You're gonna air fry this at 400 for five minutes. High five. Okay, pizzas are done. Oh yeah. Mm, that looks so good. Okay, give it a bite. Hot? Hot. It's a little hot. I don't really mm. like pepperoni pizzas, but I'll try it. Mmm, nice and steamy. That was so easy to make. I'm making this every day after school from now on. Tell me, what is your favorite air fryer food? Your Oops. favorite air fryer foods? Honey mustard, salmon, and lava cake. Ooh, let's check them out. For this one, you just need salmon, some honey, some Dijon mustard, and a little salt and pepper. First, I'm just gonna sprinkle on some salt and a little pepper, and just mix it with a tiny bit of oil. 
And for the glaze, you're essentially just needing two parts honey to one part Dijon mustard. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons of honey, which is about 42 grams, and then a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, which is about 15 grams. And just give that a nice stir until it's well blended. Yummy. And now I'm just gonna put this right on top of my salmon. Now this part over here obviously is gonna cook way faster, so you could just cut that off. But I do have some kids that really prefer the dried out salmon, so I'm gonna just leave that in there. And I'm just gonna use a spatula and lift this right into the basket. So we're gonna go to the chef mode, which pretty much just tells me exactly what to do. I'm gonna come over here, select seafood, and I'm coming down here to salmon. And so it's gonna say it's time to insert the probe into the thickest part. So you're gonna take the little thermostat here and see how there's these two little dots. And there's two dots there. You're just gonna push this right back in. And boom, there it is. And now the thickest part of my salmon is gonna be right about here. Insert that. Pop that in. And here we go, it's smelling fishy. Wow. Oh boy, okay, let's take a look at this. All right, that's looking a little chocolatey, but I'm guessing that is just because I did honey, and so honey is gonna burn a little bit easier, but let's taste it. A little happy little taste tester. He's getting taller than me. Mm, my little son. Oh boy. What the heck, this tastes different. It's good though. This is very good. It's just cooked perfectly. Oh my. No, that is actually perfect salmon right there. Can I have it? You want all of it? You're gonna eat all of that? Can you share with me? Yeah, look. Okay. Uh, it's very okay. good. So your final final score is? 11 out of 10. Sunny Bunny, tell me your favorite thing to make in the air fryer. What do you make all the time? I make pizza rolls in the air fryer all the time. Here's how to do it. <laughs> drop some parchment paper in an air fryer basket if you want to. Then just drop in some pizza rolls, put them in a flat layer. And referring to my cheat sheet right here, we see you cook these at 380 for about 10 minutes. When it's done, you just get to enjoy. And then if you decide you want them extra crispy, pop them in at 400 for just a couple of minutes more and boom, they are ready. Wow. Boston. Haley, what is your favorite air fryer food? I have two favorites. My first one is the barbecue chicken on pizza. We just had that last night. It was really good. And my second is the sausage potato onion bake on page 118. That one's easy. Mm. Now this one, you're going to want to grab some naan bread. These are some little mini ones, but you could get regular sized as well. And then of course some mozzarella cheese, some sliced red onions, some fresh cilantro, and then some barbecue sauce. This is my homemade barbecue sauce. It's in the cookbook, by the way. And then if you want, you could also do some marinara or pizza sauce. And then you'll need some cooked chicken. Now for dinners like this, I really love to use leftover chicken, but you might not have any leftover chicken. And this is where the cheat sheet comes in super handy because you just want to cook up some chicken. So instead of going to Google or searching through my cookbook to see how long to cook chicken, you just come right here. It's right here at the top, chicken breast, cook temp 380. It's gonna be cooking anywhere from 10 to 18 minutes. And that's because it just depends on how thick your chicken is, how big it is. But we tell you the internal temperature of 165 so you get it spot on. By the way, my daughter Haley, who's a college student, developed this recipe for you. And it's one of her personal favorites. Thanks Haley. So what she likes to do is preheat the air fryer at 400 and just to kind of crisp up that naan bread a little bit and dry it out, she pops it in there while she's preheating it. I'm just gonna give it about three minutes. Okay, the air fryer is preheated. My little breads here are just nice and toasty. It, it maybe could have had a few extra minutes. And I'm gonna just put them right here on the liner. It's just gonna be easy to maneuver the pizza. Now, barbecue chicken pizza. One wouldn't necessarily think you would have a red sauce on there, but it's kind of a cool flavor combination. So I'm gonna go ahead and put red sauce on one of these little pizzas. And then to my cooked chicken, I'm just gonna add some of this barbecue sauce, however much you want. It's gonna help keep it from drying out as it all cooks up in the air fryer. Open the barbecue sauce, I'm just gonna spread right here on this other 
pizza. And then go ahead and just spread your chicken right on top of your pizza. Now, if you're cooking up chicken just for this recipe, you'll probably just need one chicken breast and that will give you some leftovers possibly for like salad or another meal. And just throw on those other toppings however you like them. You could even do that cheese first and then put the chicken on top if you're worried about it flying around. I love fresh cilantro. It's one of those things. You either love it or you hate it. Let me know down in the comments below. I've got one child that absolutely hates it. It tastes like dirt to him. And then just some red onions, however much you like. Oh, and that's gonna be so good. Now, remember how I had created this air fryer? Since I did my pizza right here, like I said, it's gonna be really easy to just pop that right in. And if you have an air fryer that's super powerful and it's just gonna blow all of that around, just let it sit there for a couple minutes. It's gonna warm up the cheese, make it heavier, and then we're gonna cook it up. Okay, that's been sitting a couple minutes. And now I'm going to hook that up, punch this up to 380, and it really just needs anywhere from three to five minutes. I'll give it four. Oh, oops. Um, I just read the directions Haley gave me like all the way through, and the fresh cilantro, it goes on after you cook, so. Okay, I am starving. That looks amazing. Okay, then just carefully lift it right out of the air fryer. And let's eat. Mm. Where's the barbecue? It's in there. I fed it. Whoa. What do you think? Whoa. Mm. Wait a minute. Mmm. That was mm -hmm. a good one. Mm -hmm. What? What's that? What? This. Please don't say it's cilantro. I've got one child that absolutely hates it. It tastes like dirt to him. The green stuff? Yeah. Yeah, it's cilantro. Mm. <laughs> Other than that, it's five out of five. Five out of five for you? Logan, what do you think? I think that's a 4.5 out of five. Yeah, uh, both of them. After you de-seed your pepper, go ahead and cut those into one inch pieces. And I'm just gonna use a half of an onion today because I wanna save this for a different meal. The idea is just to get your veggies fairly even in size. And because the potatoes are so cheap, I'm using them as the star of the show. And to save time while cooking, you wanna cut these in nice little bite-sized pieces. That way they will cook faster. And because I'm doing a lot of potatoes, I'm gonna pop those in the air fryer and cook them up a little bit before I add those veggies. And to give it a little bit more of a fried effect instead of a baked effect, I'm gonna add that oil. So I'm gonna cook this at eight minutes down to about 370. Oh, no, 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 I don't wanna preheat. Stop, stop. I already kinda had it preheated. Okay. There we go. Are we going? We're going. All right. Oh, it just gave me a little turn food reminder. So I'll just give that a quick little stir. Pop that back in. Yay for auto start. And while that finishes up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up these sausages. Just wanna get them even sized and like bite sized. These are pre-cooked, so it's really just a matter of heating them up. Okay, this is interesting. It's done, but air fryer is still running. So interesting. I'm gonna stir that up. And now I'm gonna throw in those veggies, spray a little more oil, stir that up. Now this time I'm going to do like 370 or so for about six more minutes. Okay, as it's done, oh, smells really good. Okay, now we'll throw the sausage right over the top, spread that out. Ah, go in, there we go. And let's go with 380 for six more minutes and okay, okay. Turn reminder, I want that turn reminder on. There we go, there's that little reminder. It's all looking good, it's smelling really good too. Okay, the potatoes still need some cook time, but we are on the way to the finish line. I think just based on how I felt those potatoes were running, I'm gonna just add maybe two more minutes there. This is done and it looks and smells wonderful. And just to give you an idea, this really is four generous servings. It's eight cups or two liters of a delicious dinner that's super easy to put together. Thumbs up. Now I couldn't interview these two on camera because well, they were a little busy taking care of something else super important, but they love these chicken and veggies in the air fryer. For this one, I'm gonna just take the tray right out of the little basket and we'll just mix everything up right here. So we're gonna go ahead and half the recipe. It calls for a pound of chicken. We just threw in about just over half a pound of chicken right there. Then we've got a 12 ounce bag of veggies. And again, just throwing in about half the bag. 
And you can use any vegetable blend that you love. And we'll do about a quarter teaspoon of garlic clove and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. We love the garlic. A quarter teaspoon of chili powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and then a half tablespoon of Italian seasoning. You could do less or more. And then we need to add some oil to help all those seasonings adhere to the food. So you'd want about a half tablespoon of oil or just spray it on and then I'm gonna just stir everything up. Now I decided to experiment this time and take that rack out. I just wanna see how it looks in here without the rack. So we will find out if that's a pass or a fail. So then just kind of make sure everything's in a somewhat even layer. And we're gonna pop this in, pop it on, and we're gonna bring it up here to 400. And we'll do 10 minutes. Might need a little bit more time since we're running a little bit smaller air fryer. All right, this one's been going for about four minutes and it looks nice already. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a quick little stir. Bottoms, yes, they are still raw. So we definitely need some more time still. So pop that back in. Okay, let's check on these We're right here. There's a nice clean meat thermometer. Almost there. I'm gonna do something a little fun since we have this air fryer that goes up to 450. I'm just spraying it a little bit lightly. I want it to like char, really char those tops. So I've got that steak setting. It brings me right up here to the 450. And I'm just gonna do like two more minutes, highest temp with oil, and it's gonna be great. By the way, did you notice that these have a preheat button, a shake reminder, a keep warm button? I don't know if you can see those. I really like this nice glass interface. It's easy to be looking at everything when you're standing. And just a beautiful little unit right here. Alrighty, let's take a peek. Looking beautiful. My husband and I love this beef ramen stir fry. You're gonna want some extra lean ground beef, some creamy peanut butter, poison sauce, and that's what you maybe have never heard of. Let me know in the comments if you know what this is. You'll need some sriracha sauce, soy sauce, ground ginger, minced garlic, and then three packages of ramen noodles. But don't worry, you're gonna throw out the seasoning pack. And a little salt and pepper to taste. First, get some water boiling on your stove top. You're gonna cook up all three packages packages of the ramen noodles and just follow the package directions but don't do the part where it tells you to put the seasoning in. While that's cooking we're gonna cook up the ground beef right in the air fryer. Add the ground beef to your air fryer basket. If you have a removable tray this time I do want you to take that tray out and cook your ground beef on the bottom part of the air fryer. Cook it at 380 for four to five minutes. When it's halfway through cooking pull it out and then get a paper towel to kind of absorb some of that grease. It's not done cooking yet but we want to add in the sauce and Ingredients. Throw in three tablespoons of some creamy peanut butter, three tablespoons of the hoisin sauce, a half tablespoon of sriracha sauce, or a little bit less if you can't handle too much spice. One tablespoon soy sauce, an eighth a teaspoon of ground ginger, and one teaspoon of minced garlic. And then just throw in a little salt and pepper to taste, and you're gonna mix that all in together. Just get everything nice and incorporated, and then smooth it out so it's on the bottom of the air fryer basket. And then you're gonna finish cooking it at 380 for about three three to five more minutes or until the ground beef is cooked all the way through. Oh, and pull that open. Look at that meat and smell it. It's gonna be amazing when your ramen noodles are done cooking. Now granted, this is one that kids aren't going to love, 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 but I promise you are gonna love it. If only my husband would taste test on screen. Oh my goodness, you would see what he thought of it. One of my other favorites are these chicken thighs that I love to use for chicken street tacos. So we'll start with two teaspoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, and then just a pinch of that cayenne pepper. Then just give that a mix. And then we super fancily, we just trim our chicken thighs just because I don't love all of that fat. Now the next step is to dry your chicken, which will ensure that the moisture on the outside of the chicken doesn't actually steam the chicken instead of air fry the chicken. 
I also do like to let my meat sit out for just a little bit. That's gonna bring it a little bit closer to room temperature and even out the temperature of the chicken inside. And now I'm gonna just put some oil on my chicken. Don't need a ton. The purpose of this is to help my spices stick to the chicken. Just rub that seasoning all over your chicken. And when it comes to chicken thighs, they're kind of wonky, right? They're like ugly, there's two of them, they're connected. If you are worried about presentation and you want them to look like extra beautiful, because that's how you're serving them, then you kind of fold them, tuck everything in. It will take a little bit longer to cook. Or if you have room in your air fryer, you could just lay that whole thing out and it really won't matter too much. It'll just cook a little bit faster. Mine have been sitting here on the counter for a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop them in the air fryer. In my dual blaze here, I could remove this basket. Sometimes I do that when I'm cooking, but because these are gonna be so fatty, I know it's gonna create a lot of drippings, so I'm gonna leave that tray in there and all the drippings Will collect at the bottom and since I'm trying to fit all of this in here I do have my chicken thighs folded up with just a little space in between each thigh there we go two pounds of chicken thighs that's what it looks like and by the way this recipe is on page 67 in my cookbook we're gonna cook it at 400 for 12 to 16 minutes because unlike chicken breasts Chicken thighs actually taste better if you cook them closer to 175 slash 180 internal temperature. All right, look at those. Now, admittedly, they've been resting for a little bit while I've been handling some other things. So you can see, I'm sure they got up to probably 190 because even after a rest, they're at 180. But I'm gonna let them rest a little bit longer because I'm gonna chop all of this up and we're gonna enjoy some tacos. And now that's cooled down a bit, Time to start shopping. Then once you've got all of your supplies ready, it's time to assemble. And the beauty of this is everybody can put what they want on their own taco. This is how you do the easiest weeknight dinner ever. Five mm. stars, of course. Everything about this is blessing. I got more recipes for you right here. And check this out if you're still struggling with your air fryer. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.